may be seated. The name of the message today is Overcome Till the End. Have you noticed that the first, first words we have recorded of Satan was to cast a doubt? There's an old fable that says that the devil once held a sale and offered the tools of his trade to anyone who would pay their price, but they were spread out on the table and each one was labeled uh, hatred, Malice, despair, envy, sickness, pride, and lust. All the weapons that we all know. But off to the one side lay a harmless looking wood shaped instrument in the market. Doubt and discouragement. It was old and worn, but it was priced way above the rest. Only ask the reason why the devil replied, Oh, because I can use this one so much easier than any of the other weapons. And no one knows that it belongs to me. So with it, I can open doors that are tightly bolted against the others. But once I get inside, I can use any tool that suits me best. Welcome to the next sermon in our series, Frustrated Grace. This spring we, sent, we spent several weeks uncovering the beauty uh, of grace in a series called Amazing Grace. Grace, God's riches at Christ's expense, or unmerited favor. The Bible tells us to grow in grace. Not only are we saved by grace, but we're commanded to continue to grow to learn just how much that grace covers. Amen? And so we looked uh, for several weeks at the grace that bought us. But as a follow-up, we've been looking at some attacks of false teaching. And those false teaching can't take away your salvation. Amen? But it can make you doubt or wonder or question your standing with God. And that's the tool that Satan loves to use. He, he'll never, ever, ever, ever be able to make a born-again person lose his salvation, but he can make a born-again Christian or tempt a born-again Christian to act like he is not saved or to think that he is not saved or to despair like he's not saved. We've learned that since salvation comes by grace through faith plus nothing, there is nothing you can do uh, to obtain it. There's nothing you can do to keep it. Do we need to turn that off or is it okay? Is it okay? Okay, if you need to turn it off, the, the, it's, it's up there. Okay. Trying desperately to, uh, to stay cool on a very soggy day. Soggy, swampy day. Today we're going to look at an attack that was common in a place we uh, ministered before here. Walla Walla, Washington. It was a Seventh-day Adventist stronghold. Now, the Seventh-day Adventists aren't the only ones that embrace this attack. But it's an attack of doubt 
launched by using a series of scriptures fired in rapid succession like automatic rifle fire. Are you sure you're going to make it to heaven? Well, just as you're about to say, well, yeah, I'm born again, then they start with these verses. Well, you know, you'll never know until the end. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life. Him that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Um, to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna. Him that overcometh and keepeth my works. To him will I give power over the nations. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. Him that overcometh, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Him that overcometh will I grant to sit in my throne. You hear that over and over and over, and you're starting to think, well, my goodness, I'm not sure that I am still overcoming. The new believer can be rattled by this barrage of verses, or even an older believer who maybe has drifted in his fellowship with God. By the way, if you don't feel saved, it doesn't mean you're not saved. It might mean that you don't feel saved because you've drifted a long way from God and the assurance of the Holy Spirit you're not hearing because the Holy Spirit's not talking to you right now because you're not in a right relationship with God. doesn't mean he's left you. It means he's quiet. Amen? But you get that doubt. Yes, I'm saved by grace through faith, but, but, but the Bible says I've got to overcome to the end. Oh, boy, I better try. And so you have folks. They come back. I'm coming back to the Lord. I've got to try to overcome. I'm afraid if I had died right now, I'd go into hell because I, I've drifted. I'm going to come back. Let me try again. Let me come back. Let me come back. And any time... Anything bad happens, car quits, there's a waterfall in the basement, or, uh, you know, it could be big stuff, it could be little stuff, dog threw up on my uh, floor, uh, or whatever. God's mad at me, because I'm not overcoming right now. Is that what the Bible teaches? Again, we have seen over and over that by grace are you saved through faith, then not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works as a man should boast. We've seen that. We see, but I think I have to do something. Remember, grace is unmerited. To say, God, your blood wasn't enough. Your grace isn't enough. I got to do something to finish this thing out. Is to frustrate the grace of God. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. I'm so glad that the Word of God is the best commentary on the Bible itself. God's Word is perfect and there are no contradictions. You say, well, this is one. No, we need to keep studying. The Apostle John, by the way, the same guy that wrote all the verses we just did rapid fire in Revelation, He's the same one that wrote our text verses today. And our text verses today help us to understand exactly what it means to overcome. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. 
Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. All right. So we're going to study this, these two verses through. And we'll do it by asking and answering a couple of questions. What is an overcomer? Well, an overcomer is one who is born of God. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Now, here's some interesting things about this. The word born is in perfect tense. That means it refers to a completed act with continuing results. Oh, think about that. A completed act with continuing results. Whatsoever is born of God. When I got saved, I was born again. I was born of God. On June the 11th, 1970, as a kid, I knelt by my bed and I asked Jesus into my heart, repeating a prayer after, after my dad, but I believed in my heart and I knew it. And, and that was a completed act. But that completed act, way back in ancient history, is having continuing results right here and right now. How cool is that? Nicodemus came to Jesus, middle of the night, and Jesus answered, Verily, verily I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Well, Nicodemus, he was confused. Saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time in his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, that is physically, and of the spirit, that is spiritually, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. When a Christian is born again, or born of God, it means you've taken God at his word. For God, this is uh, John 3.16, a little bit later in the same passage, talking to Nicodemus, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So, to be born of God is to say, I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm on my way to hell. I'm going to ask him to save me because God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. I'm going to ask him to save me. And the Bible says that if he, you do that, you, can be, you are born of God. Now, what happens? If you're born of God, you overcome the world. And I'll, I'll explain more about that in a little bit. Who is the overcomer? The overcomer is one who is born of God. The overcomer is one who has faith in Christ, who's asked Jesus to save him from sin, take him to heaven. That is the overcomer. You say, are you sure? Who else is the overcomer? Well, now, this may seem like a silly answer, but hopefully you'll understand as I go. The one we're talking about is the one that will overcome. The overcomer is one who overcomes. Huh? I guess what we've got to figure out is, what does overcome mean? The word translated overcometh is from the Greek verb nikao which means to carry off the victory. The verb implies a battle. The forces of this world system, the flesh, the totally depraved nature, the devil, 
that has surrounded the saint. We're all engaged in a battle, but the Bible says that everyone born of God is already an overcomer. Now, whatsoever is born of God, that's a perfect tense, right? That means past action with present results. You with me? Or continuing results. Now, the verb for um, overcome is in the present tense, meaning you are constantly overcoming. Get a hold of this. Whatsoever is born of God, an action that took place in the past that has continuing results, overcometh the world or is constantly overcoming the world. You say, I don't feel like an overcomer. Aren't you glad that it doesn't say whosoever, uh, aren't you glad that it doesn't say whosoever is born of God uh, will feel like an overcomer? It says whosoever is born of God overcometh. Doesn't matter how you feel, doesn't matter what it looks like, but we know that in Christ we will have the victory. I'll explain more of that in a minute. But it's a habit of life with the saint to gain victory over the world. To go down in defeat is the exception, not the rule. In Galatians, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. But watch, the flesh lusts against the spirit. The spirit against the flesh. These are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Here's the thing. For every born-again believer, there's a fight. Your flesh says, I want what I want, and I want it now. The spirit says, I want you to do what God says in God's timing. So now you're back and forth, right? How do I know which one will win? Which other ever one I yield to. But I am free to yield to Christ, to yield to the Spirit. As soon as I do, I cannot fulfill the lust of the flesh. So I am free to choose to do right. Therefore, I'm an overcomer. Whether I choose to live like an overcomer or not, that's another animal. But I'm already an overcomer. The fact that all my sins, past, present, and future, are already nailed to the cross, I'm an overcomer. Because Christ has given us the victory. So next question. What does one overcome? Overcome the world, what does that mean? You know, on Wednesday nights we've been talking about um, how, how folks end up putting stuff in the Bible that isn't in the Bible. And a lot of the, time, the way they do that is by just calling something worldly. But what actually is worldliness? Worldliness is the world's mindset and priority system. So here's what the Bible says. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. What does that mean? How is it that I, just a bag of flesh and blood, don't feel like much of an overcomer? To say, I overcome the world. What does that mean? Does that mean I should then, because I want to overcome the world, um, dress like an Amish person? 
Is that overcoming the world? What, what is this overcome the world? We have that in 1 John chapter 2. By the way, same guy that wrote all these other verses. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. What is worldliness? Here it is. All that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, not of the Father, but of the world. The world passeth away, the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. What is the world? The world is a, a mindset. It's a me first. Lust of the flesh. I want it. Lust of the eyes. I want it. The pride of life. I deserve it. That's worldliness. That's what the flesh does. When the flesh gets excited and, and wants stuff outside the will of God. I want it and I want it now. Now, the devil would say, this is strong. The flesh is strong. You can't fight it. The Bible says, you don't have to. God's already defeated it. You are partakers of the divine nature. You have everything you need for life and godliness. Yield to the spirit and this is not a problem. Therefore, I'm an overcomer. James puts it this way. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widow in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. From that me first, I want it now mindset. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enemy, enmity with God. Whoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. What does it mean to be a friend of the world? Friends with people in the world? No. Friend with that kind of, you deserve this. Now, can I, can I help you recognize worldliness Within the, within the um, sheep-like costume, you know, wolf in sheep clothing. We'll dress up the, the nastiness of worldliness, you know, I want it and I want it now, with some bogus theology. You ready? God just wants me to be happy. Well, does God want you to be happy? Yes. Does God, does that mean that God wants you to be happy um, by pursuing your sin? No. So saying, oh, I'm tired of my wife and God wants me to be happy. Um, no, stop it. <laughs> That's worldliness. Why? I want what I want and I want it now. That's worldliness. So, I mean, we can talk about worldly anything. Some people would call it, well, that pew is worldly, or that's a worldly colored carpet, or, you know, uh, that's a, a worldly whatever. Wait a minute. It can be worldly if it is tied in with that mentality that says, I want what I want and I want it now. That's worldliness, okay? So, we can be overcomers of this world's system. We're by giving unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. Here it is! having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 
They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. We're told, see, I'll get into the story in a minute. One of the problems with us believers is we have all the equipment, we have the standing, we have the victory, yet we live with our head hanging down, acting like we're all defeated. In Christ, we are more than conquerors. Amen? In Christ, we have overcome. In Christ, we have all that we need for life and godliness. There's a story told about a soldier in the army of Alexander the Great. And this soldier was not acting bravely in battle. When he should have been pressing ahead, he was lingering behind. A general saw him hanging back behind, uh, behind the line of confrontation. And the general said, what's your name, soldier? And the man replied, sir, my name is Alexander. The general looked him straight in the eye and said, Soldier, get in there and fight. Or change your name. What's our name? Children of God. Christians. Little Christ. Born again ones of God. Alexander the Great wanted his name to be a symbol of courage. Our, our name what we're known as, a child of God, one born of God, a little Christ, needs to be one that is synonymous with overcomer, victorious. Not because we go about trying to win the victory, but we go about confident in the fact that Christ has already won the victory. What does one use to overcome the world? Faith in Christ. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. By the way, it's not just having faith. It's having faith in Jesus that matters. Why? Because he's the one that has overcome. Check this out. These things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. We know all about that. Amen. But be of good cheer. Why? I have already done overcome the world. By faith, we access grace. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Grace accessed for salvation, and then righteousness is credited to our account at the heartbeat that we get saved. He hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. <coughs> but the same unmerited favor that, it, that accesses righteousness at the point of salvation continues to have us stand in the righteousness of Jesus Christ right now. And because Jesus is the object of the overcomer's faith, we are overcomers. 
who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. What do we know about Jesus? A virgin shall be with child, to bring forth a son that shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Jesus is the Son of God. So this is the victory of faith. But faith in what? Faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the person that overcomes the world. Identification with Christ in his victory reminds us that we are as he is. Look at this. Nope. There we go. Herein is our love made perfect. We may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in the world. Oh, let's camp on that for a second. Say, I'm not a victor. I am not an overcomer. I mess up. If you've asked Jesus to save you, you're standing in his righteousness. He gives you access to have power over sin. And look at this. As he is, he is the overcomer. I have overcome the world, he said. As he is, so are we. I'm a child of God. He's the son of God. He's an heir to the throne. I'm a joint heir with Jesus. As he is, so are we. Wow, that'll work. movie and by the way I, I hate to think about how old this movie is now but I think most of you will know it you ever heard of the matrix the leader of the ragtag bunch went by the name of Morpheus and uh the young deliverer who he believed was the promised one goes by the name of, name of Neo and needless to say not everyone, actually most everybody didn't share the enthusiasm concerning Neo and the prophecies of his coming to the rescue. In one scene Morpheus is standing before the council and he was asked to defend his actions. He's confronted by the military uh, antagonist in the movie who says to Morpheus not everybody believes what you believe Morpheus and he calmly and boldly replied my faith does not require that they do what a statement my faith isn't built on the notion that I have to convince others. My faith isn't weakened when someone else says, oh, I don't believe that stuff. My faith doesn't change to suit current culture. See, my faith is built on a relationship with Jesus Christ. My faith is demonstrated when I share with others what Christ has done for me, what he's doing in my life, the fact that he has shown me how to overcome. So don't let the world define your faith. 
God bless you as you become hands and feet of Jesus. You had better overcome to the end. Guess what? That's done. I already have. I've won the victory because Jesus won the victory. When I placed my faith in Christ, I got the victory. He's taken my sins. He gave me his righteousness. I have overcome. I am overcoming. I will overcome to the end because it's not me that has won the victory. Through Jesus Christ, I am an overcomer.